So now we've got a couple of files recorded in using various different methods, opening files from existing locations on our computer, taking audio from the web, recording audio directly in using a mixer or, or studio. We'll need to save these in a format and in a place that we can get to easily later. It's a good idea to use a naming convention that makes sense now and in the future. So for now, we can save audio as a WAV. That's the most commonly used format for radio. It's a Windows PCM WAV, mind you. There's a couple of different WAV formats out there. You'll find all of the various file formats in the drop-down window when you go to save a file. So we've got a couple of things here that we've just recorded in live. There was a bit of me just talking. and we've, that, that was called Untitled, um, as you can see here. And we also recorded a little bit of the Al Pacino speech from any given Sunday. As you'll see, Adobe Edition will give an automatic file name to each recording. So my recording was untitled, a little asterisk next to it, just to remind me that it hasn't been saved. And untitled 2, which is the more recent recording from any given Sunday. So saving these is going to be quite easy. I'm going to delete my own recording. So to do that, I right-click on it and select Close Files. It'll remind me that I haven't saved the file. And I'd say, yeah, that's fine. I don't want to save it and click No to that. And I'll double click into Untitled 2 and go to the file menu and save as. Control Shift and S will also get this if you're getting into using the keyboard shortcuts at this point. Down here in the bottom of the window, you'll see the various file types you can save as. We'll look at MP3s a little bit later on. But for now, we're looking for the Windows PCM.wav. And there it is. I'm going to save this as any given Sunday and Pacino, and save. We're saving it back into the basics folder, which we've been using since the start of this tutorial session. Sometimes, though, you'll record a file, and you won't want all of the file. You'll want to lift a clip from it. This is very good for lifting clips from longer interviews if you're working on features or documentaries, or just pulling clips for news bulletins. Let's just imagine I want this section of the clip and nothing else, but I want to keep the rest of the file for later use. I'll show you now how to save a selection that's been highlighted from an existing WAV as a new file. Let's just audition this to make sure it's what I want. To the biggest battle of our professional lives, all comes down to today. Okay, so let's just say I want to take the three minutes bit as well that he says as well there before. All I'm doing here is I am left-clicking, like we did before, to highlight the play line. In this case, though, I'm holding the left mouse button down and I'm dragging in the very same way as you'd select text in an email or a Word document. So left click and hold and drag. And that selects a range of audio for you. What I want to do now is I want to right click on it and save selection or copy to new. There are two different approaches to doing very much the same thing. Copy to new will take that piece of audio and create a brand new file which will be called AGS Pacino 2. I can now save this as a different file type if I'd like. The other option is to right-click on the selection again, Save Selection, and I can now call this Al Pacino Edit. And I'm saving a brand new file with just that range of audio in it. Really good for lifting clips. Of course, the key here is to choose file names that make sense, that you'll be able to figure out what they are later on. From a housekeeping point of view, there are three things that are really important at this stage. Firstly, as we can see, Audition doesn't organize your files for you. When you record something new, it'll call that Untitled. When you record something else, it'll name it Untitled 2. It's up to you to keep the audio clips from each individual project organized. So what you should do is keep audio files from each individual project in one single folder. So for that short feature you're working on on the music of the Beatles, keep all audio for that project in a folder called the Beatles. Trust me, it sounds really simplistic, but it makes moving or archiving your work later an absolute doddle. It also makes sure that you won't lose your files, which most people in radio do at some point. Go on, be honest. Secondly, never work on the original copy of a raw audio recording, particularly if you're just learning and getting into the whole audio editing environment. Keep these backed up in case something goes drastically wrong at edit stage. So you know, I can work on a copy, I can make all the mistakes I want, but I've got the original backed up somewhere. That's the second thing. And the third thing is to save all your audio files at the very same sample rate. We looked at this in the previous video, and it's so important. Decide on the sample rate of the offset and stick to it. 
If you're importing older files which are saved at a different sample rate, you should change them. You can do this in Edit View by using the F11 hotkey. So, for example, with this file, if I wanted to change it to 32,000 Hz, I select it, press F11, and then select the sample rate I want, in this case at 32. I can change the channels from mono to stereo, or the bit depth as well, which we generally don't do. We'll leave it at 16 for broadcast radio is perfect. And click OK. Audition will now work to downsample or upsample the file sample rate details. Very useful. In this case, it's downsampling from 44,100 Hz to 32,000 Hz. Again, believe me on this, using files at the same sample rate makes life so much easier for you later on. So these three very basic disciplines will save you a whole lot of time, they'll reduce stress, and they'll keep you smiling when we start multi-track editing later. So to recap, group audio files into subfolders depending on the project you're working on. Edit only on a working copy of important audio files. Decide on your sample rate and stick to it. And back up your files regularly to DVD, hard disk, or a USB thumb drive. So now you're pretty much up and running. Take some time to practice what you've learned over the last couple of videos. Get used to changing your sound card and Windows mixer settings. Open some existing audio files. Record some audio in from the web. Save it. Practice lifting clips from it by copying to new and saving selection as. Try ripping some audio from CDs or DVDs, then save that. And create folders and subfolders for each project to keep your files organized. And again, of course, also back up your files. It's often said that repetition is the mother of skill. So finding some time to play around and get used to what you've just been learning will really help deepening those skills. I'll talk to you in the next video.